Hello everyone. My name is Michelle Owen and I'm a workers compensation attorney in Virginia. And today we have Brad Hughes with us who has been an advocate for uh, distracted driving safety and specifically he's been really involved with the move over awareness uh, campaign. So Brad, why don't you introduce yourself and, and give us a little bit of, of your personal journey. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, my name is Deputy Brad Hughes. I'm with the Powhatan County Sheriff's Office. I've been with the department for well over three years now. I've been in law enforcement for a total of 29 years. And throughout that time, I've had the opportunity to see um, individuals, how they've traveled on the highways and how they've either tried to get around certain places without paying attention to those that are on the highways themselves. Well, after my injury back in 2014, I noticed how so many individuals were getting struck, or we consider them as struck bys. And the tolls were starting to increase more as far as individuals getting struck and the people were getting injured. So I made it my passion while I was in the hospital to work hard and diligently to work towards the Virginia move over law. And Trooper Andrew Fox, who was with the Virginia State Police for several years, unfortunately lost his life because of an individual who, fell, who hit him while he was doing his job. And basically this is to protect people that are on the highway due to an emergency and not in their vehicle. Correct, but any vehicle that's on the side of the road, whether it's a personal vehicle or somebody who has their four ways on, police, fire, rescue, our towing industry, highway workers, so anybody who's on the side of the road, you must slow down. If you can't slow down, you must move over. The one thing that a lot of people have an issue with is when they see something, they wait to the last minute. And when they wait to the last minute, that's when incidents occur. If you start seeing those lights way ahead of you, go ahead and start making that move to the left or start making that move to the right. If you make that move, others will follow. So how did the, the move over awareness come into existence? Like how, how did this get started? It got started because so many individuals were getting struck. And what we were trying to do was, um, they were trying to bring more of awareness of those that were on the side of the road. It was, it started off with first responders. And because when they're on the side of the road and they're dealing with the crash, you'll see the first responders as they take their vehicles and they'll turn them to the left or turn them to the right to make it so that they have what's called a block. If they have the block put into formation, that allows drivers ahead of time to start moving to the right. And that worked for a good period of time, but just like everything else, it gets old and it gets stale. Mm -hmm. So we had to add a little bit more to it. You with Trooper Fox, when his incident occurred, his family tried to make the move over law more effective and putting more of a fine towards that, but it didn't make it through our House nor our Senate. Um, it was rebroadcast when Lieutenant Brad Clark lost his life in Hanover during our tropical storm. And his wife, Melanie Clark, worked very hard to make this law enacted and to the point that she got it passed. And now it is a $250 fine if you fail to move over. And just this past year, we made it so that if any vehicle is on the side of the road and they have their four ways on or somebody's broken down, you need to move over for them as well. What motivates you to uh, bring awareness to this, these safety issues? I've got to go back to 2014 with my injury. Um, when I was working a crash on Melothian Turnpike in Chesterfield County and was hit by a vehicle that was driving too fast for road conditions. At that point in time, there was a state trooper that was also struck in Chesterfield County. And then we had a fire truck that was struck. And then it just kept going on and on and on and on. So while I'm sitting there in the hospital room and I'm seeing this going on, I'm like, somebody's got to speak for those. Somebody has to speak for those that cannot speak anymore. I'm very lucky that I was one of the ones that was able to rise back up and, and continue my career. My career will never be the same again, but I want to make sure that if, if I have one person hear what I say, that they can, they can make that move so that everybody else can come home safely.
So how long have you been uh, doing this type of community outreach and raising awareness on this issue? Let's see, it's probably been, it's been 10 years, it'll be 10 yeah. years coming up since my crash, which is amazing. Um, so probably about eight years and I've been working with Dry Smart Virginia mm -hmm. and I've also been working with VCU Project Impact. And with those two organizations, we take it into the school settings and we also take it into businesses, um, the military as well. But our focus is the individuals in school. Those that in are high school in or? high school, yes. Those that are taking driver education courses, mm -hmm. we go in and we speak to them about the dangers of texting and driving, drinking and driving, and of course we put in the Virginia move over law. So with all that put into play, with Dry Smart Virginia, we have it so that we have a simulated truck, and the individuals get the opportunity to get inside of the truck, use a cell phone and have to text words while operating this 1500 pound 15 a Chevy 1500 pickup truck and um, it's it's very interesting to yeah. see them do that and then they have to sit here and then they'll see the tickets they receive for either driving off the side of the road or striking or hitting mm -hmm. someone with VCU project impact what we do is we do a full mock incident so it goes from a crash crash demonstration to the individuals getting extricated out of the vehicle, the driver being charged with DUI manslaughter, and then taking it into a mock trauma center as well, where the students will see their own peers being pronounced dead. So, how, does, how does that work? It's, it's very impactful, not only for them, but for myself. Having to do this for the past eight years, I have to relive my crash mm -hmm. over and over again with me having to speak to these individuals about it. But the individuals get this opportunity to see what the firefighters have to do to get you out of the vehicle, whether it's cutting the rooftop off or cutting the doors off and seeing your, your classmates being put on a backboard and then your other classmates having sheets put over top of them. Um, so yes, they take it at that point of, yeah, it's, it's fun, it's games mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But once we get into the, the trauma center and myself and other advocates or survivors get the opportunity to talk to them and tell them where we're at now and what we had to deal with beforehand, it brings it full circle. Yeah. And that, that's, the, that's the best part about it. Have you gotten any feedback about, uh, from any of your students about uh, it, how it's helped them or raised their awareness on, with their safety with driving? When I talk to the students, I always tell them five seconds. In five seconds, you can change your life, and in five seconds, you can change someone else's life. So there has been many instances where I have been somewhere in the state of Virginia, and I've had a student who will walk right up to me or somebody who was just at a gas station, mm -hmm. and they'll yell out, hey, Mr. Hughes, five seconds. And to me, that lets me know that they remembered yes. that period of time that we sat there and talked. Um, or I could be in a store and somebody will say, hey, didn't you speak at my school? Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing for me because it makes me feel like I'm doing my job. Yes, this takes a lot out of me to talk about it, but if I know that I'm getting into that one person's head mm -hmm. to remind them just how serious this is, that I'm trying to put in the good fight for their life, then it lets me know I'm doing my job. That's great. What can our viewers do to help you with your vision in raising uh, awareness? What you can do is you can follow the law. Mm -hmm. That's basically it. You know, what we're asking you to do is, is when you see first responders on the side of the road, or you see myself or this young lady on the side of the road, we need you to slow down. We need you to make sure that you move over properly. If you start seeing these four-way lights ahead of time, or the highway workers on the side of the road, don't wait for, for, for 499 when it says that the lane is gonna end at 500 feet. Make that move right then and there so that we can all come home to our families. Our family is just as important as yours, so make the move so others can follow. Remember something, this is the first time that they've actually had an opportunity to hear me on this side of the table. Mm -hmm. Before it was her on the <laughs> side of the table. table. Now it's like, you know, I see Brad on TV, see Brad doing this, but now I'm getting to see Brad and listen to Brad to what Brad's mm -hmm. having to say. So for her, it's, it's part of my movement. 
Because if it hadn't been for her work and her dedication as being a lawyer and an advocate for those that are out here in the workman comp field, I wouldn't have been where I'm at today. So I have to thank her for what she has done and everybody in here. Because not only, you know, she said it to me when I first came in here before, that when you're part of this, you're part of this as a family. And it has been true since day one. You know, everybody who is still here, I still hear from them all the time. If I post something on LinkedIn or post something on whatever social media, I'll hear something from them. So that lets me know that this family right here is solid. So I can understand where she's coming from. Being She's sitting here, and to her, it's like, this young man should have never been here. You know, but he fought hard when he was here, and he's still fighting hard to this day. I do have a question for her. So this, this past holiday season, you know, for Thanksgiving, did you have an opportunity to travel down the highway? Um, a little bit with the shopping, yes. Okay. So during that period Actually, of time... Actually, to pick up a Christmas tree. Okay. <laughs> so during that period of time, have you noticed more people using their cell phones hands-free, or do you still see them holding the phone? I, I see a lot of people using the phone. I really do. They're at a stop sign and, or a stoplight, and they're not moving forward because, and then you look over, and it's because they're on their phone. They're on their phone. Well, see, drivers need to understand that in the state of Virginia, if you have your hands, if you have your hand on the phone, period, we are a hands-free state. So if you have your phone, you have your hand on the phone, you will be cited for it. Um, no matter if even if you're using it for your GPS or, you know, a lot of people think that if I have my hand like this and I'm talking on my phone using a speakerphone, that's kosher. No, it's mm. not. You either have to have a Bluetooth or you have to have it so it's plugged into your speaker in your car. And you're right. Individuals will sit there at the streetlight the entire time and go through their phone while they're doing something holding up traffic, and before you know it, people start honking their horns. That causes what we call road rage. Right. So with that in, in question, take the time to do what you need to do when you're at a parking lot. Mm -hmm. Don't sit there and waste somebody else's time when you want to sit there and just go through your phone and scroll through Facebook, go, scroll through a, uh, a store ad just to see if there's something still on sale. So... You know, I try to tell a lot of people, people tell me all the time that I just want to honk my horn at them. You right. don't want to do that because that can incite so many different options for somebody else to take that out on you. Right. And so, you don't know where they're coming from. No, you don't. <clears throat> and, you know, it's no different than having an individual who was working on the side of the road and, you know, like a VDOT worker. And before you know it, that person is sitting there, you honk the horn, they hit the gas, and now they just struck that individual. Right. And the next call they're gonna be making is a phone call to you because mm -hmm. you handled the workman comp right. claim. So that in, a, in itself bring in, makes it into a full circle. So with your uh, move over awareness, um, did the laws change in July of this year? They did. So in July of this year, they now have it so that if anyone is on the side of the road, so we already know right now that if a first responder or anyone with blue, red, or amber lights, you must move over for them. But it also includes those that are broke down on the side of the road. So if they have their flashing hazard lights on or yeah. a vehicle is just parked on the side of the road, we want you to do your best to move over. If you can't move over, we want you to please slow down for them. Because it's no different than having yourself sitting in a chair on a straddle white line and having somebody drive past you at 60, 70, 80 miles an hour and you can't move. I recently did an example of a tow truck driver who was, you know, tow truck drivers are at the worst because yes. of the fact their workspace is so small. And, but it's the same example. If that tow truck operator is standing there on the side of the road, and he is working from the rear of his truck. He only has less than two feet before somebody can, somebody's going to strike him from behind. Just here recently, last month, 
we had a tow truck operator up in the northern areas, northern part of, um, I want to say it was Michigan, I do believe. Mm -hmm. And he had his baby girl inside the truck. And he always brought her to work with him every single day. Well, on that particular day, there was a dog that was out on the highway. He wanted to shoo the dog away so the dog wouldn't get injured. Again, his baby girl was sitting in the front seat. He had just taken a picture of her showing that he had his daughter with him. Mm -hmm. As he got out of his vehicle and went to take care of this animal, an individual came and struck him. So that's why it's so important for everybody to understand. We're not sitting here picking on individuals about failing to move over, what we're trying to do is we're trying to educate them as much as possible so that your brother, your sister, your mother, your daughter, anybody who's in part of your family can make it home, you know, to you each and every night. Well, thank you um, so much. This has um, been very enlightening. I'm very glad to see you. It's been, been a while. Yes, ma'am. So it's nice to see you, and it's it's uh, you've been doing some great, great work out there. Thank you very um, much for everything that you do. Yes, ma'am. I've been trying my best to advocate for those who can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that VDOT, along with Virginia State Police, Drive Smart, came together, and AAA came together and put up some, some signs that would be posted at every rest area throughout the state of Virginia. And basically what it says is slow down, move over. And it's just to make that awareness, you know, the That's small right. the small signs mm -hmm. themselves can lead to the big the big picture. Yes. And that big picture is we all want everybody to come home alive.